We'll move on to Ohio State and Ryan Day. Ryan Day met with about 100 members of the Columbus business community on Thursday morning. And he actually put a price tag on NIL. He, he believes that Ohio State needs $13 million in NIL money in order to keep the football roster together. Now, I don't know that that's exactly right. This is kind of what Nick Saban was doing when all the Jimbo stuff started up. He was talking to uh, Birmingham businessmen. Hey, if you guys want us to stay competitive, you're going to have to up the ante a little bit. And that's exactly what Ryan Day did, only Ryan Day put a price tag on it. And this article is is very interesting because it looks at it as, okay, for an 85-man scholarship team, that would be about $150,000 per player. But the better calculation is really closer to $500,000 each for like 26 guys that you can't live without. I, I think this number's about right, and I think you're going to see more coaches doing this uh, in the future. Yeah, you kind of feel the same way. Yeah, but that's if he wants to keep everybody together. And, and at the end of the day, you're just not going to be able to. The whole purpose, the one caveat that NIL was going to do, it was going to spread out the talent. And you want to have a major talent advantage over everybody on the planet. It just ain't going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely not going to happen. Because because here's the thing. Here's what's going to happen. He's going to get the $13 million, right? And then Wisconsin's going to say, mm, you only paying them $500,000 those top-tier guys, and then uh, maybe 100000 for your you know middle-tier guys. Uh, we'll take that top-tier guy for 800000 because we really need him, and we don't have all the other guys that you got. Yeah. See, all you need is one school to value – one of your five stars or one of your top tier four stars that you've developed, thank you very much, over a couple of years, and all they have to do is outbid them on that one player. They don't have to bid them for every player. Exactly. Like Wisconsin can and do one of them. talent advantage goes away. Exactly. If, uh, if, 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 if Michigan takes one kid from them and Wisconsin takes one kid from them and Michigan State kick takes one kid from them, and we're talking about top tier starters, but – you're 13 million now. You're going back and asking for more. Oh, we got, I gotta have more. At that point, then it gets kind of tricky, right? Then you figure out okay, are the Ohio State boosters willing to keep uh, upping the ante for these certain players, or uh, did they just say, no, nah, you know what, just go out and find some other ones? Like, yeah, you, you're a good at, coach. At some point in time, at some point in time, you should look at the coach who's making nine, ten figures and tell him, do your job. Yes. Okay? You do your job, all right? You coach better than him. For for decades, we had more talent than they ever had, okay? And we beat them consistently. Now, talent might be close to even. I'm going to need you to keep beating them. Yes. Just because the talent's getting even don't mean your paycheck's getting lower. No, I need your ass to show up and go to work. Exactly. Coach better. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Coach better. Uh, speaking of going I, to work. i tell you what. Uh, go ahead. If I, if I was one of these rich guys, if I was one of these bo- bo- big boosters, I'd absolutely have something for my coaches. I don't mind paying the kids. I don't mind that. But your ass has been making $10 million a year or more all these years, all these years, and you had the best talent? Uh-uh. No, sir. No excuses. You don't get an excuse. Be better. Coach better than them. Because every now and then, Michigan beat your ass like they did last year, and they did it with inferior talent. Yeah. So tell me how that happens. Uh, well, Explain you, to me how that happens. You whip them. That, that that's it. Well, like that's what Michigan but that's, did. But what 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 I'm saying is is if if you're if you can only win with superior talent, then why are we paying you? That's a valid why point. Why don't we just pay somebody else? I mean, that's that Lane Kiffin said that. Right, Lane Kiffin said, "Hey, yeah. like all this other stuff is not going to matter. Like it's whoever's going to be able to buy the best roster." And at that point, like, why would they be paying so much for these coaches when when they could pay somebody? Let a la Sam Pittman, right? Like, yeah. get yeah. some get some guys that know X's and O's and whatnot. Uh, but that is one one thing that has come up over the last couple of weeks is 
you, with all the way that this is shaking out right now, you may not see the same assistant coaches that have been rising up the ranks because they can recruit, right? You may see some guys go from high school ball to college a little more frequently because they actually know the X's and O's. And it won't be because of their ability to create yeah. relationships or whatever. It's whether or not you can coach. And maybe that's a, a good thing that's going to come out of this. Yep. I'm all in. But I've been talking about this forever, Gary. And this is, this, but hang on now. You say you're all in on it. You say you're all in on it. But your guy who wins all the time has all the best players, all the best coaches. He has every advantage anybody could possibly have. And he still doesn't win it every year. Yeah. How on earth could Gus Malzahn beat him? How on earth does that happen? That's Cause... a fireable offense. Well, no, Malzahn. The benefits you have. <laughs> Malzahn's a good coach, and it's not like Auburn had scrubs. But it, but hang on, but hang on, but hang on now. But I'm not talking about scrubs. It doesn't matter. Just because the other team is really good, you have the best team ever assembled by college football, and you still lose games. To yeah. way to coaches that everybody in the world would say is inferior to you. You know what that tells me? They're not inferior to you. We, I, I agree with You're you. You're not God. No, of course not. <laughs> hey, the ball is oblong and it bounces funny. I will say that. Uh, but no, no football team is going to win every game. I mean, that's just that's bananas. Um, I, I say team. But with the talent discrepancies and the coaching discrepancies uh, for the staffs that we see in college football, yeah, yes, they do. They do win all the games. Ohio State wins all the games almost all the time. Yeah, but that's what because that's what we're saying. There are upsets. so much better than everybody. Yeah, but one upset a year, two upsets a year doesn't make the sport better. No, that's I, not I good agree. For anything. But that, that's why and I do all think all it does is give people a false security of, of of Ryan Day's ability to coach. That you're you're not wrong. You are not wrong about that. So I'm, if I'm Ryan good. Day and Dab, I hate. Let me tell you a guy I hate. Let me tell you a guy I hate. Dabo Sweeney. If Ryan Day and Dabo Sweeney swap places tomorrow, Ryan Day would fall on his dick so fast it would be unbelievable. He'd be a good coach. But I'm telling you, the ACC would run through him. And that's with a team that's not loaded, but but they're not bared stock like Ohio State is. That's I, – I do wonder about that. I think we're going to find out a lot about Ryan Day this year. Uh, he no, did. The team is loaded. I mean, the team is loaded, but at the same time, like there. What are we going to find out? Uh, there are some. Uh, there's new faces, right? And now you've got Jim okay. Knowles as your defensive coordinator. You know, was that the the smart move? Is that going to be an instant thing? I'm a proven great defense coordinator. You got one of the best offensive wide receivers uh, cores in the country. You got one of the best quarterbacks in the country. You got one of the best. Offensive linemen in the country. All the skilled players are elite and going to go play on Sundays. Heaven forbid. Oh, this is going to be a tough year for him. We're going to find out something, I guess. He's well, got it, a damn NFL team on his on his on his college football team, <laughs> but we'll finally find out if he's good or not. Well, no, I, I'm going to I'm going to figure out because last year they were pretty loaded too, and they lost uh, they lost two games, didn't even make it to the Big Ten title game. Uh, I'm curious if you know if they lose games again this year, if they lose two more games, which Again, two like going ten and two is not the end of the world, right? You and I talk about this all the time. It's not your your birthright to win ten ball games, but with Ohio State and with this roster, uh, if you if you can't find a way to get back to that Big Ten title game, yeah, we then there might be questions, right? And obviously, we'll see how the season goes. It's hard to say that before we ever play a football game. But uh, again, when you were that loaded, uh, it does make you question some things, right? Like Alabama last year. Uh, th there's no way that that team should have been in a national title game. And and yet they were there at the end of the year, uh, I suppose, just based off playmakers and, and making the right coaching calls in, in very dire times. But I'm, I'm just I'm wondering what Ohio State fans are going to think, what Ryan Day is going to look like, what will we think of Day after this season if he does lose two ball games in the regular season. Like, I don't see it. I, I think they'll probably go undefeated. But, I mean, you never know. I mean, we kind of thought that last year, didn't we? So I, When you I, have all the advantages and you go undefeated, you still haven't done anything that's impressive. Yeah. I just don't understand that. Hey, let's uh, – He has let's, all the best coaches in the Big Ten. 
He has he has all yeah. the best players in the Big Ten. If he beats everybody in the Big Ten, who cares? What does that mean? What you, does that tell us? Yeah, that, uh, well, that's what I'm saying. It, it only tells us that he's doing his job if they win every game. If they lose, then that's where the questions come in. So, at least that's my viewpoint on it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.